when I'm not putting on my annual Christmas morning synthesizer show. questions that I get on YouTube, so let's get to it. Poor Sean soul sucked at such a young age. Oh well, now time for a question. Have you ever used the Nashville numbering system? I briefly talked about this before when I did a video with Ian about the Nashville scale and how Nashville just likes to take credit for a lot of other things that existed for a very long time. So if you don't know, the Nashville numbering system is just a really great way to communicate with other musicians or to kind of tag chord progressions. What that means is, you know, like in any scale, in any diatonic scale or key, there are seven notes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the octave. And then to talk about the chords in there, like in the key of C, you'd have the first chord being C major, the two chord being D minor, three, E minor, four, F, five, G, six, A minor, seven, B half diminished. It's the same thing, it's just talking about those as numbers, right? So if you play like a one, four, five in C, that's a C, F, G. And you know, if you play a one, four, five in G, then you could just know, okay, that's a G, C, D. Somehow, along the line, Nashville has gotten credit for this being the Nashville numbering system, which of course I use it. I would say 90% of the musicians that I know use this as far as like, you know, this is a, a four, five, six in a key, right? To me, that's just fundamental. <laughs> <laughs> numbering, but apparently it's the Nashville numbering system. So yes, I do use the Nashville numbering system. I think it is the most effective way to memorize chord progressions, uh, communicate chord progressions with other musicians, but I refuse to call it the Nashville numbering system. I just call it how to organize chords. It doesn't get any wider than this. Oh, you mean the Christmas rap song that is woefully underappreciated on YouTube right now? Yeah, I'm sorry. He's a That is, uh, that's pretty white. I need to say, fantastic player, amazing, no denying. To me, kinda acts like you know it all, or I'm better than you, kinda arrogant, never smiles, seems like he's more into himself than teaching. Anyone feel that way too? Woke up Christmas morning to, to look at my amazing comments, and that one started out so good, but it took a quick, quick and salty turn on Christmas Day. Sean can't slow down, he's the Lionel Richie of YouTube guitar lessons. And then comments like that, Bring me back up and then make it all worth it. Hey Sean, I'm a beginner guitar player who has really high expectations with his guitar playing. It's been two years and I have been facing problems and sticking to a solid practice routine. Yes, I've been working on my chords and scales. I don't know much songs because when I first picked up the guitar, I was told that learning songs is the worst approach in learning guitar. It's really embarrassing when someone asks me to play songs and I improvise instead and they go like, yeah, I know a guy who's playing guitar for six months but knows a lot of songs. Should I learn songs or work on the other areas? What is the best practice routine you can suggest? How many songs should I learn? I'm really serious about it. I can give my six to seven hours daily. That's awful advice that you've gotten. Of course, learn songs. If that's, and again, whatever your practice routine should reflect what your goals want to be, you know? If improvisation is your main thing and you really kind of want to be more of like a, you know, a scale-based player than just rip the chords and the scales all day long. But if you want to be like a songwriter, you want to play songs, definitely just learn songs. In fact, song-based learning was kind of like the entire way that I taught myself just using tabs off of Ultimate Guitar and stuff like that. So yes, totally learn songs. And as far as like how many you should know, I mean, start with like one, right? <laughs> Get one down, then make it two, then make it three. But I think, you know, if you can... If you can get 20 songs that you can play from beginning to end, and they don't have to be complicated things, they can just be, you know, cowboy chords, but knowing the structure of them, being able to play them in time, and then kind of being able to understand where you are in the song at the moment, which is something that non-beginners very, like, really take for granted a lot, like knowing how many times around a certain part is. That's something that you should always really kind of be focusing on and, like, trying to see the whole song and where you are within that song in your mind's eye. Which again, something that is super, you know, 
not as easy as maybe non-beginners remember it being. But yeah, just learn songs, especially for six, seven hours a day. Yeah, break that up a little bit. <laughs> you know, two scales for an hour a day. That's still more than 99% of guitar players would ever practice scales. And then just learn some songs. So yeah, if you want to get good at guitar, learn how to play some songs. For listening homework, I'm going to throw you to a band called Bent Knee, which I was introduced to by my girl Farron, who's back in town, so hopefully we'll get her back on the channel soon. But uh, awesome band. They definitely have some really cool arrangements, compositions that have a lot of kind of curveballs in them, so check them out. Let me know what you think. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, or the website. I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot.